Today we're gonna to talk about building your team. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary with the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, and this is Ascension Presents. It's a question I ask people actually quite a bit, uh, sometimes in confession or in like a pastoral counseling situation. And the question is like, like who, who's on your team? Like who's on Team Tiffany or, or Team Tommy or, or insert your name? And the reason is, in part because I realize um, how, it used to happen organically and it doesn't anymore. Um, and there's such a need, like this, the, the following of the Lord and our traveling through life, uh, we're not supposed to be doing it all by ourselves. And a lot of the troubles we run into are because uh, we're doing too much on our own. And so just a bit of an, an observation is I'm pretty convinced um, that in, for most, for the most part, like we're in the most isolated kind of culture and period of history. Um, and of course, this isn't the same everywhere, uh, but in a lot of places, right? Like it takes a certain amount of, you know, wealth to, for example, like grow up in Iowa, apply to NYU, get in move across the country, move into the dorm, start going to college. Uh, all of your family, everyone you've, you've kind of grown up with stays back in Iowa and now you are, you know, on the East Coast, right? Like that's not an experience that was possible uh, for most of history or, you know, some people certainly did it, like getting on ships and traveling, but it certainly wasn't as prevalent because historically, right, for most of humanity, even if you were traveling, uh, you were with like, your family, your village, your your herd, your tribe, whatever. And so you'd grow up, for example, in Bethlehem, right? <laughs> and you'd know everybody in Bethlehem. You'd know your neighbors, you know the carpenter, you know the guy who works on shoes, you know, like you just, you had this huge, large community. And and human beings actually thrive in that type of situation. But like, what do we, what do we have today? Just a little bit of observation, personal experience, from other people, right? Like we've never been more connected, had more friends, more followers, uh, yet like loneliness, loneliness is really at an all-time high. Uh, secondly, we've never had more access to like to human experts, right? You want to learn something, you can you can YouTube it, but also less access to parents, right? Or or less access to like real life mentors, right? And we've kind of traded the mentors, we've traded the parents, we've traded that type of relationship. Uh, for the experts in many cases, right? But they, they, they're not equivalent. Um, and lastly, right, like we've never been more, if you will, listened to or more known, uh, but less seen. Just think about like all of the data and the apps you use and Google and all that sort of stuff. Like um, they know you in a way that you've never been known before, but they know you as a product, right? Uh, and not necessarily as a person, right? And, and you and I know, like, we're made to be seen. We're, we're made to be kind of reverenced and entered into relationship with uh, as persons, right? Here's just a little bit of, like, what's going on and why it's not working. You know, and, and so just, like, a little reflection, like, how it used to be. Like, pretend you're, you're a young couple, you're getting married. There's a whole lot of life experience that's going to be happening. There's a whole lot of new, new questions that are going to be raised. And historically, right, if you grew up in sort of the small, you know, Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, you probably had 20, 30, 50, 100 other couples who you knew, who you can observe, and who you can ask questions to. More and more, like, the idea of getting a, a mentor couple, it's like harder and harder. Um, at the parishes, like, we're meant to like, be following Jesus like, as, as disciples in, in community, and how often it's like we're, we're kind of like we're, we're in and out. And sometimes like, one of the manifestations of this is like there's this increase in desire for a spiritual director. But what, what's really happening isn't just that you want someone to talk about like the movements and to serve the movements of the Lord, but you're kind of looking for, for one person who can provide in himself, like what the whole village provided. You're looking for a friend, you're looking for a mentor, you're looking for somebody who can give you some, some advice, some pastoral counseling, some marriage advice, relationship advice, all that sort of stuff. And it's like, like, hold on, like as, as a spirit director or as a priest, I'm not an expert and everything. There's there's things that like your parents are going to know about you. There's things about other married couples are going to know about you. Like, and, and, and we really want to tap into that resource because if you're just coming to one person to provide the whole village, like, we're not going to be able to do that, right? And so the, the idea is this, like who who should be on our team? Um, who should be on our team? So here's, here's, here's my proposal about like what type of people or roles we want filled on our team. It's a pretty long list, to be honest. And for the full thriving, I think, in, of our humanity and our spirituality, 
we want to check as many of these boxes as possible, but also like one person can do a number of these, right? So what, what are some things we're gonna want? Like a regular confessor is great. It's like a priest who you can go to if it's, uh, you know, every couple of weeks, once a month. Like having that regular kind of spiritual relationship is 100% a huge win. For some people, um, having a spiritual director is necessary. For most, it's just not practical, right? So if you can have a spiritual director, great. But for most people, for most people, it's not going to be probably possible. Um, but if you have everything else filled out, not having a spiritual director is going to be okay. Some sort of discipleship group, some people who like you're, you're following the Lord with, you're talking about it, uh, you pray together, you talk about your prayer. This could be a group at your parish. This could be a group at your college. This could be your family, um, like mentors. So uh, certainly parental mentors, people who have kind of uh, got a, a few more years or wisdom or experience than you. Somebody who's in your same state of life, who, um, but, but a little bit further along. So like if you're married, like you really want like another mom or two or three who can talk to you, who can guide you, who can minister to you. If you're, I do think like a couple, having mentor couples, all of that, it's like, it's really important. And the idea of even proposing like we should search these things out Again, it's, it's a novelty because for most of human history, this would have just been part of your local community. For a lot of people, it's important to have a psychologist, um, a, a therapist, whatever. Like you and I, like we're complicated. Uh, you and I have a lot of different components and, and you and I, again, and this is what's important. Like we were never meant, uh, we were never meant to make this journey alone. There's a reason. There's a reason that when Jesus began his mission, he called together a group of disciples, right? And they were going to be itinerant. They were going to be traveling, but not alone. Um, they had mentors. They had each other. So my friends, again, the reality is that if we're trying to do this on, on our own, it's going to be extra difficult. Like we're not meant to do it alone. We're not meant to do it alone. So, so and again, like you might be hearing this like, okay, this is, this sounds like a lot. This sounds like a lot. Um, how, like, what do I do? What do I do? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna prioritize. We're gonna pray. We're gonna pursue. Okay, again, like I, I need you to prioritize building your team. Um, if you're if you're isolated and you're trying to figure out life on your own, again, like you're not setting yourself up for success. So prioritize it. Uh, number two, pray about it. Ask the Lord to provide these people, and then pursue it. Like you can't just you know you just can't sit in your one bedroom studio apartment in New York. Um, want it? Pray about it, and not kind of make some phone calls, not knock on some doors, not not uh, look to see what kind of Catholic groups are in your area. This, this is true if you're trying to find a husband or a wife, right? We got to prioritize it. We got to pray about it. And we got to put ourselves out there. We got to pursue it. Brothers and sisters, I'm just convinced of, of this importance. I'm just convinced of this importance. And, and I think the Lord's going to hear, you know, our, our prayers for this. So I'm grateful for y'all and, and praying that uh, the Lord can provide you with like the team, the resources, the family, the friends, kind of the guidance um, that, that y'all need. All right. God bless you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos, poco a poco, little by little. Vamos a llegar.